Hi everyone, welcome to New Bear. I'm Monique and today we're adding our fourth butterfly to the Kaleidoscope project. If this is your first butterfly video, there's a segment at the start on how to tie your antenna. If this is your fourth butterfly video, you'll know that you can skip through that segment using the timestamps down below and go straight to the working section for this butterfly. You're going to need one shuttle today as I introduce you to our wide Pico butterfly, Agnes. Let's go. Before we start any tatting, I'm going to show you two different ways we can tie our antenna. Now that might seem a little weird since we don't have any butterflies yet, but I want to show you this first up because the way we tie the antenna will determine how much thread we need to leave for the tail. If you don't have a lot of thread, you won't want to be excessive with your antenna knots. You might finish up a shuttle with just enough for your butterfly. If that's the case, a small single wrap knot will work well. We're going to pretend that I've got a butterfly back here. I'm just going to tie a loose knot. On each side. I'm going to tape my butterfly to the table. Holding the end of the thread with your finger Use something like a toothpick or a tapestry needle. I'm going to use my little wooden spike. Place that into the middle of the knot. Now we can position our knot wherever we want it to be. By doing the same thing with the other side, again our spike allows us to position the knot exactly where we want it. So we're able to make our antenna knots nice and even. If you have a little more thread to play with, pass the end through the eye of a needle without splitting the ply is ideal. Hold the thread in your left hand, about 10, maybe 12 centimetres back from the needle. Again, we have our imaginary butterfly back here, holding the needle by its tip. Back it up so you can pinch the eye of the needle and the thread together. Take hold of the thread. I haven't got enough there. Take hold of the thread from above the needle not the one down here, we want the thread from the top. Wrap your needle three times and then slide those wraps down along the needle, snug them together. This thread comes into the pinch. So if I can show you without losing the lot, that's what we have. Holding the wraps between your fingers, pull your needle through. And we have a three wrapped knot. Just gives a little bit more bulk to the knot for our antenna. So the antenna you decide to use will dictate how much thread you need or rather the amount of thread you have will dictate which antenna you can use. With ring A, leave your tail. We have a ring with a count of 10. We need to work a long pico. I'm using a one inch gauge here. You can make it longer if you like. It just depends on how large you want your final loop to be. Don't make it any smaller than the inch or it will be too tight. So when we're done, our long pico becomes a loop. The longer the pico, the taller the loop. 
that will make sense in a second when I've shown you the next bit. So after working our long pico, work one more double stitch. That gives us a count of two. Now we're working one. We're working a pico and one. Pico and one. A pico and two. To join back to our long pico, take the thread from around your hand and lay it across the top. Coming up from underneath, and pull that thread down, pass your shuttle through the loop. Use the pick on your shuttle to hold the top leg of the pico up while you pull the bottom leg of the pico down with your thread. Work the second half of the stitch to secure the wide pico. So from the front we have our lovely arc. On the back, we're hiding the underside of the pico. Continuing with our count, we're finishing out our ring with eight pico three. Turn ring A slightly to the left. Ring B starts with three. Join back to ring A. Continue with six. We're working a long pico with an open measurement of seven eighths of an inch, just over two centimeters. Work a count of one pico two, we're joining to the long pico like we did before. So place the thread over to the pico, come up from underneath, pull that loop down, pass your shuttle through, and secure the second half of the double stitch. We're finishing our ring with seven pico two. Ring C, we are working two. Joining back to ring B. We have seven. Followed by our long 
Pico. So we're doing seven eighths of an inch because this is the second bottom wing. Followed by one double stitch, Pico, and two. Joining back to our long pico. Securing it with the second half of the double stitch. And continuing with six pico three. Sometimes if your loop doesn't seem like it's tall enough, it can be caught up here at the back. You can see I've got a little bit of a loop in there. So you can adjust that just by pulling your pico up and taking the slack out of the back side of your loop. Ring D. three joining back to ring C we're working eight we're working our long pico this one it's our inch measurement with two double stitches followed by a pico and one pico and one and a pico and two. Join to the long pico again. Secure it with the second half of the double stitch and finish out our, our ring with a count of 10. On the back, we are cutting our threads and tying a square knot. It's helpful to actually tape my butterfly down, just stops it from moving around and allows me to tie the knot without having to catch the butterfly.
there she is. I hope you've enjoyed Agnes today. See you next time.